I remember once standing in front of Jackson Pollock at the Museum of Modern Art and having this conversation that went on and on until the guard really wondered what, what, what we were doing there. What were we talking about? Planning how to roll it up and put it in our umbrella. But, but it took years after <laughs> that before we did a children's book. And, and the reason that we wrote Action Jackson, which was illustrated, uh, and for younger children, is because Jackson Pollock had, in a way, a messy life. And we didn't want to talk about the traumas of his life. We wanted to talk about his creative spirit. We wanted to talk about his, his innovative style and the fact that he could unroll a canvas on the floor of the studio and dance around it like a ballet dancer, dripping paint, and what would come from those beautiful, delicate paintings, although his life was, as we know, not so delicate. The, the person who wrote the review in the New York Times did, began with several paragraphs on how Jackson Pollock had been an alcoholic and a woman had died in an automobile crash and we hadn't mentioned any of that stuff and we're like, well, of course we didn't because that's kind of beside the point to the paintings and one of the reasons we wrote the kind of book we did, although there was a sidebar to that because, but one of the reasons why we wrote the kind of book we did is because we just wanted to talk about the art and the process of making the art. And we didn't want to get into all the autobiographical stuff, which is flashy, but not really germane. But when we were researching um, our third book, The American Eye, we did a chapter on Jackson Pollock, there were wonderful oral histories available of all these people who'd watched him paint. And it almost seemed to make them poetic. And so we began looking at these people waxing poetic about watching Jackson Pollock paint various things. There were people that he'd admit to his sacred studio space and they'd sit against the wall and watch him work. And we began to collect some of those quotes and I think that probably formed the core of what we were doing, although certainly um, so did all our visits to Pollock Krasner House and uh, just trying to experience the, not only the artwork, but the environment in which he created it. I think because in our books, uh, at least the one, uh, Ballet for Martha, Making Appalachian Spring, and uh, Action Jackson, we do do biographies in the back matter. And we did, I think, in, in the Pollock book, tell a little bit about his autobiography. But as Sandra says, we were concentrating on, on the creative process. And his was such a alluring creative process. And abstract painting is often very hard for even art teachers to teach in the schools. And this was a way of, of uh, making it not just palatable, but making it come alive for the reader trying to get to the feeling of the painting and not just the right, visual there, feeling, but there the, can be the a physical feeling. feeling, yes. And there can be a feeling from just a line uh -huh. moving back and forth or a bright color as opposed to a pale color. And these are the kinds of things we like to talk about and form the basis of our conversations in that very first book, A Painter's Eye. Uh, and we try and integrate those kinds of conversations into all our books about artists.